I'm Stephanie Howe. I'm a runner for the North Face and I'm also a sports nutritionist. I have a PhD in nutrition and exercise science. So today we're going to talk a little bit about your nutrition for the rut. And there's a couple different ways to think about your nutrition. There's what you eat on a day-to-day -day basis and then there's what you eat before, during, and after training sessions. So today we're going to focus on what you do before, during, and after training sessions because that can really impact your race. So the first thing, the golden rule, is you really want to practice with what you want to use during the race. This is important because one, it gets your body used to that type of fuel. You're training your gut so that when you get into a race situation, your body knows what to do with it. And then two, you also find out what types of fuel you like and dislike. Um, a good rule of thumb is to start with simple sports products because they're made to get into the body quickly when you're running. So I like to recommend gels, blocks, and um, easy to digest bars like Stroop Waffles or Cliff Bars. And you can really pick the type that you like. They're pretty in, inexchangeable um, with one another, but you wanna start implementing them on your long runs. In a race, you want to get about 200 to 300 calories per hour. And this should come from mostly simple carbohydrates, so those blocks and gels, and then a little bit from more complex options like bars, chips, pretzels, um, sometimes fruit, or even like a PB and jelly sandwich. And um, the reason you want mostly simple is because when you're running, the blood flow doesn't really go to your stomach. It's going to your working muscles. So it makes it really difficult to digest food. And so you want simple carbohydrates that just absorb across your stomach and get into your bloodstream so you can use them. Um, that said, in longer races, you need a little bit of variety. You need something savory and salty to break up that sweetness. And you can sometimes digest a little bit of real food when you're moving at a slower intensity. So my, my recommendation for you with training is to start practicing with getting in minimum 200 calories an hour on your long runs. Find out what flavors you like, what textures you like, keeping in mind that it might change depending on how hot or cold it is out. So make sure you, you test it in different conditions. Uh, second, is hydration and that's a little bit more individual but you want to just make sure you're not getting super dehydrated when you're out for a training run um, the best way to kind of figure out your hydration or your sweat rate is to look at your urine before and maybe after you finish a run if it's dark yellow you you're definitely dehydrated um, if it's kind of like pale yellow you're probably in a good place most people have sweat rates between 0.4 to 2 liters an hour. So find your range and just drink to thirst, which sounds really um, kind of not descriptive, but you just want to be conscious of how much you're taking in. If you're really thirsty, you need a little bit more. If you feel like you're hydrating well, you're taking drinks with every time you fuel, you're probably getting enough. Two other things to practice right now are one, your pre-race breakfast. You want to start teaching your body how to process food or fuel right before you run. And so start with something that's a simple carbohydrate and a little bit of fat and protein. So runner favorites tend to be oatmeal with nut butter, um, toasted eggs, avocado toast, yogurt and granola, just something that sits well for you and start using that before you do your long run because then race day you'll be ready to go. You'll know you've practiced it a million times and it sits well. The last thing you can do right now to help yourself prepare is your post run fueling. There's this window of time after you finish a workout, particularly a hard workout or a long run. It's about 30 minutes after the workout where your, your muscle cells are like a sponge and anything you take in during that time is going to go directly to those muscles to start facilitating the recovery and the repair process. And what this does is makes it so that you recover quicker so the next session that you do, you're gonna feel better. You'll fill your gas tank up all the way rather than just three quarters of the way. So things that you wanna reach for right after a workout are, again, things that are easy to digest and things that also taste good. So chocolate milk is a crowd pleaser because one, it has the ideal ratio of carbohydrates to protein, about four to one, and it tastes good. 
really easy to sip on a chocolate milk right when you finish a workout. Um, really the most important thing is just getting something in. So I tell people, you know, you want mostly carbohydrate, a little bit of protein, but honestly, if you crave chips and salsa, that's okay. That's better than nothing. So there's been runs where I've finished and I've gone straight for the pickle jar or straight for some guacamole with some maybe really salty chips. And although maybe that's not the ideal recovery food, it's better than not doing anything. So getting what you can 30 minutes after. If you focus on those three things in your training leading up to the rut, that's gonna prepare you a lot better and make race day much more of a success.